Good morning. So here, here's the say that how we're going to do the uh, halacha here of the stuff we learned. We just learned on last week. Really, um, <clears throat> two things we're learning about here, two halachas or minhagim. One is what to put on the seder plate specifically. Uh, we talked about actually let's go in order. So the Gemara is taking us throughout the seder night, right? So we began with the. Uh, before the Seder, preparing for the Seder, setting your place, making sure you have an appetite, making sure you have four cups. And then we got to Kiddush itself, the first cup. Then we said, and these are the two things we're going to be talking about now. Two halachas, really, that the Mishnah tells us. One is, after you wash, to have something dipped, a vegetable dipped, so we call karpas, which therefore requires orchats, because you have to wash before you have a dipped vegetable. That's the first halacha we learned. We discussed what the vegetable should be for karpas <clears throat> and how you would work that out if all you had was lettuce and therefore you end up eating twice the same vegetable and how you would deal with that. That's the first thing. And the second thing is, now that you dipped, you have to set your seder plate. That's the halacha, right? Of course, our custom is to set the seder plate early. We'll get to that. But this is the halacha, the mission to set your seder plate. And specifically, what we're talking about here so far is... The Mishnah told us you have to have two cooked items, which we have egg and the zroa, the, sh the shank bone. We have a neck of a chicken, whatever. We'll get to that also, right? <clears throat> but, but the Mishnah's requirement to have two cooked items. And we discussed what that might, what that could be. Those are the two halachas we've been discussing last week. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to uh, first, we should have done this really on Friday, but there's just a few more lines in the Gemara on this subject, because the next subject is going to become about koirach, sandwich that's going to be the next subject in the Gemara so we're going to finish these few lines from the Gemara and then we're going to go to the Rebbe's Haggadah on the subject of which items to set on the Seder plate which two cooked items should be there and then from there we're going to go to the Alter Rebbe Aruch, which is going to take us right and the reason why we're doing that is because in our custom Setting the table comes before Kiddush and cast before Kiddush and before everything. So we're going to look at that. And then we're going to go from there to the Alter Rebbe Shulchan Aruch, where there he discusses, once you're done Kiddush, you have to dip. And once you're done dipping, you have to set your Kaira. And we'll see how he says it there. And then once we do that, we'll go back to the Alter the Rebbe Sagada to discuss uh, the dipping, the Karpas. Okay, so finish the Gemara. Rebbe Sagada on setting the Seder plate. Alter Bashokhan Aruch on Karpas slash setting the Seder plate, and then back to the Rebbe Sagoda on Karpas. Okay, this is the Seder. You'll see how it's going to flow when we do it that way. Kuf Tesvav Mud Aleph 115a. Countdown. One, two, three, four, five lines from the top of the page, the third word. We had a dispute last week between Rav Hunna and Rav Chizda, which is, if you only have lettuce, you have to dip twice, because our sages tell us to dip twice in order to raise curiosity from the children. You also have to have marar as a mitzvah, whether it's rabbinic or biblical, we'll get to that, but it's a mitzvah to have marar. And we're going to go with Taisvis, that we all agree that in order to fulfill your obligation for murder, you have to eat the murder with the intention that I'm eating it now for murder. If you ate it without that intention, it's no mitzvah. Therefore, what should you do? Avona says, well, the first time you dip, you're, you only have lettuce, you're using lettuce, using uh, chazeres, which is a murder vegetable. You're dipping it. You're not doing it for the sake of mitzvah. You're doing it just to raise curiosity. The mitzvah murder you're going to do later when you have matzah, as the Mishnah told us. So you dip it, you make hadama, no intention for mitzvah. When you eat it the second time, you make the bracha, Allah chilas Even though you're eating the same vegetable twice. Because the first time you wasn't, you weren't doing it for the mitzvah. Rav Chizda responds and says, this is not nice. You just finished eating murder, and now you're thanking Hashem for the mitzvah murder. You should just have it in mind the first time to do it for Marar. Make the bracha, Hadama, and Marar on the first one, because it's all you have. 
So by karpas, basically, you're eating maror. And then when it comes to maror time, you'll eat it again because you have to you have to raise curiosity. Says the Gemara, Surya, in the land of Surya, Avdi, they would follow Kiravhuna, the opinion of, of Ravhuna. Ravhuna said that if you only had lettuce, then the first time around you make Hadama, not for Marar. Second time around, Allah Chilas Marar, eating it for Marar. With the bracha of Allah Marar, not the bracha of Adama. Yeah, because you made Hadama in the first one. Rav Sheshes, Bred Rav Shua, Rav Sheshes, son of Rav Yeshua, Avid Krav Chizda follows Rav Chizda. Rav Chizda says that you'd make the bracha Allah Chilas Marar the first time because you're anyways eating lettuce. You're filling your, you're filling your stomach with lettuce and you're not making a bracha a, a marar, so make the bracha then. And that's what he would do. The hilchus and the halacha is kafasid Rav Chizda like Rav Chizda, that if you only had lettuce, you'd be making marar, you'd be making the bracha marar the first time. And then the second time, which we'll also get to that in the Shachnarach as well. But that's going to come after we do how you set your how you set your plate, how you do karpas, and then we'll get to that halacha, because that halacha is more connected to marar than it is to karpas, right? Because this is this is a marar question. You're, you're not doing your... Instead of karpas, instead of the... Which is a tangent. As if... Ten, that's right. Off of the, uh, because the way the mission is phrasing, because the mission is phrasing was, even if you only have chazera, you still have to do that, right? So it became a discussion of that, right? Okay. Rav Acha Bred Rava, Rav Acha son of Rava, Mahadra Ashar Yerokas would actually seek out other vegetables to use for karpas, like we do, La Fuken Nafshim Pluta, to avoid a dispute. Right? That way, the first time around you're making Adama on a regular vegetable, potato, onion, parsley, whatever the celery, whatever your options are, Chabad custom will see soon, potato or onion, make Adama. There's no question of making Allah Chilas Mara because you're not eating a lettuce. And then, second time around, Tomorrow. Make your murder. Okay, so that we have the Gemara's conclusion. Okay, so now let's get to the practice. So again, we'll start with the Alter Rebbe, the Rebbe's Haggadah, which is going to take us through setting the plate. Once you have a plate set, we'll go to the Alter Rebbe Shachanarach, which describes the Karpas and the plate set, because again, in Halacha, as per the Mishnah, setting your plate comes with Karpas, right? As opposed to like we do it before Kiddush. Yeah. Right? Which we'll see in a second why. So we'll get to setting our plate, which is before Kiddush, which is Karpas and, sir, and set plate, because it's happening at that point. And then we'll get to the Rebbe's Agada on Karpas. And um, from there, we'll get back to the Gemara. Okay, so let's see. The Rebbe's Agada, it's on page. Here's this. this here, if you want to follow along, page to Zion. Okay, so you'll remember that the Rebbe's Haggadah is a commentary on the Alter Rebbe's Haggadah, right? The Alter Rebbe wrote a Siddur. Writing, writing a Siddur means, like there are many, many people who wrote Siddurim. Writing a Siddur means two things. Number one, or two things primarily. Number one, you're selecting what you feel is the proper uh, liturgy for the text of the prayers, number one, because sometimes you have variations, and the variations change based on understandings of proper grammar. Sometimes it's based on scriptural and, and implication. Sometimes it's based on halach, uh, halacha considerations, sometimes based on Kabbalistic considerations. So you're choosing the proper language that you feel is correct, number one. Number two, if you put together a siddur, you're also gonna write a running commentary of what to do as you read the various different things in the siddur. So a good siddur includes a Haggadah as well. So with someone who writes Haggadah, again, you'll first of all select what you feel is the right text of Haggadah, because there are certain slight variations between de various different texts. That's number one. Number two, you'll have a running commentary of what to do when. As, it, as is the Alter Rebbe's Siddur, so that's, that, that's the Alter Rebbe's Haggadah, this, this part of the Alter Rebbe's Siddur, which tells us the right language, as well as uh, customs of what to do at which point during the Seder. The Rebbe has a commentary, a running commentary on the Alter Rebbe Siddur. So, look at the bottom left, the Siddur, italic. No, just the, Sorry? Not the whole Siddur. Just, just the Agada. Oh, that would be amazing if you had the whole Siddur. <laughs> Wait, we have another part, like on, on Berch Zanenin, 
on Luach Brechtanen and Ah said on Seda Brechtanen, Mitzel Sadaim, other things. Okay. Bottom left, the last paragraph there, or second to last paragraph, it says in the italics, Yisader al Shachana Kaara. This is the relevant section from the Alter Rebbe's instruction that the Rebbe is commenting on, right? So this here, this phrase, Yisader al Shachana Kaara, he should set in the table of Kaira, is before Kaddish. And that's the text. That's the actual text of, of the Alter Rebbe's Agada, yeah. of the Alter Rebbe's instruction, yeah. which is set your table with a plate, with your Kaira, with your plate. Mm -hmm. And then it says, on this plate, you should have three matzahs. And on the three matzahs, you should have on the top right, you should have the egg. On the top left, you should have the zraya, and so on and so forth. Right? And this is all written out before the actual, before Kiddush. Right? Different than the Gemara. Different than the Gemara, and different even than the Shulchan Aruch. As we'll learn soon, the Shulchan Aruch actually says, including the Atar Shulchan Aruch, says, like the Mishnah, to set your table at Cairo. So let's see. Betur v'Shulchan Aruch, in Tor and in Shulchan Aruch, including the Alter Rebbe's, in the parentheses it tells us the citation, Mavoyer, it explains, Shigam Atta, but even nowadays, Mevi in Hakaira, the plate is brought, Rak only, Achash Dies Kois Rishon, after drinking the first cup. As per the Mishnah, the Mishnah says you finish your first cup, you dip, and then they bring before you. Right? So, from the Gemara, from the Shulchan Aruch, it would seem that you keep on following the pattern of the, of the Mishnah. So, even nowadays, in the time the Shulchan Aruch is written, meaning even post-Temple times, even post-Talmudic times, the Shulchan Aruch, the Torah being written in, let's say, the, uh, the, the uh, it's in the 12th century, let's say, right, 12th century, 1300s, it's the 12th century, and the Shulchan Aruch written in the 14th, 15th century, Right? So it's post Talmud of times, it's post Temple times, and they still say to bring the Kaira at Kaipas. The Alter Rebbe is even later, in the uh, 18th century. Still says to, to set your Kaira at Kaipas. Right? Verak Shulchanoi, it's only that his table, Ye'arach Mabo'ayyam, should be set before. That we learned. The table's got to be set before with uh, silver and ready for you to lean. Right? Because the Mishnah put that part. And, you're four, and you have to have enough wine for four cups in advance. Because the Mushnah put that part at the beginning. Okay, so sit at your table ready to lean and that it's opulent so that it's in the in a manner of freedom as we learned. That is covered. But where does the Mishnah tell you to set your plate? Only after you make Kiddush. So the Shulchan says the same thing. And yet, the Siddur Kol Yaakov, and the Siddur called Kol Yaakov, this is a Siddur written by Rabbi Yaakov Emden. We learned about him on Shabbos afternoon. That, uh, for lack of a better term, colorful character. We beat the giant series. He spoke quite a bit about Rabbi Yaakov Emden. So in his siddur, we, we actually spoke about a siddur as well. Uh, Mashba, the implication is, from that siddur, so Rabbi, let's remember that uh, Yaakov Emden is before the Alter Rebbe. Well, before the Alter Rebbe. He's in the, uh, where is he in the years 1700? So it's uh, he's Baal Shemtu's time. So it's 50, 60 years before the Alter Rebbe. Right, so Mashba, it's, it's implied. Come in. That was me on my oh, phone. sorry. Uh, no problem. Da ka'ara, that the plate, Yisader should be organized, Allah Shulchan on the table, even before he goes to Shul. That's what it seems like from the Kol Yaakov, from Rabbi Yaakov Emden. The Koydim Amir Seder Karm Pesach, even before you read the Seder Karm Pesach, right? On on Pesach, on Erev Pesach in the afternoon, after we, um, before Mincha? Before Mincha, right? We read the order of the Karm Pesach. Isn't that right? It's before Mincha? It's before Mincha or after Mincha? I think it's before Mincha. Mm -hmm. I don't remember either. I'm pretty sure it's before Mincha. We sit here and say, we read the Korban Pesach. So the Kol Yaakov, the Rabbi Yaakov Emtid writes to set your Seder plate even before that. We don't have it. I'm pretty sure it's before Mincha. Yeah. Now he continues. V'chein mash makzas b'shalah. It also seems somewhat implied by the Shalah. By Horowitz, the Shnei Luchas Abris, the famous uh, Shala, in his commentary in the beginning of Psachim, it seems also that he's of the opinion to do as well. I didn't look up the Shala, so I don't know how it's implied a bit. We have to know, like, if we're doing in-depth study, we would look up all this stuff and see how they ever conclude all this. But as he says, Mash Maksas, it's implied somewhat in the Shala, so that was going back to an even earlier source, even earlier than the Bayerik of Emden, which seems to imply also to set the table, to set your Kaida even before you go to Shul. Now, the Alter Rebbe, Siddur, 
so far, neither here nor there. It's not like the Shulchan Aruch slash Gemara to set your to set your plate after Kiddush, and it's not like a Yaakov Emdin and a Shalom, which seems to imply to set it before you even go to Shul. But there's no mention of it in the Alter. The Alter Rebbe says to put it here when you come just before Kiddush. Just before, right? And the Alter was order say the carbon Pesach is there, and then it says set your plate, and then it says Kaddish. Right, so when the Alter Rebbe it implies. When you get home to do it, but not waiting till after Kiddush as the Gemara, as the Gemara slash Shulchan Aruch has implication. Yeah, so continues. Avol be Siddur Rav Shapsi Rashkov, but in the Siddur Rav Shapsi Rashkov, Rav Shapsi Rashkov is one of the early, um, also let's say rough, let's say somewhere fifteen sixteen hundreds. He is someone who compiled the Siddur based on the writings of that Rizal. One of the early Arizal Siddur. The Alter Siddur is considered an Arizal Siddur because it's it's built largely on the Arizal's instructions as they appear in the pre Chaim of Reb Chaim Vital. Right? The Arizal didn't write anything. The Arizal lived in the 1500s in in, in Spain in Bertis in Svas, same time as the base of Yosef Cairo. Same time they were friends. They both signed a number of letters. Um, so he never wrote anything. He spoke. His student Reb Chaim Vital wrote. And Reb Chaim Vital is writing his, his teachings, and in them he says uh, that Rizal would stand, say this at this point, stand here, explain this at this point, and so on and so forth. So, based on those instructions, Siddur had to compile. One of the early ones is Reb Shabshay Rashkov. The Arizal, the Alt Rebbe Siddur, is based on a lot of the Arizal, but takes out a lot of, or almost all of, the meditations. So, it's built based on the Arizal without actually the meditations. Reb Shabshay Rashkov includes the meditations. Saying he would do it this way because this represents this name of God and this represents this Kabbalistic idea and this one represents this Kabbalistic idea and so on. So often, uh, probably the most, whenever we cite to Arizal Siddur, without qualifying which Arizal Siddur is talking about, for the most part he means of Shapsi Rashkov's version. Shapsi Rashkov. Shapsi Rashkov. You can see right there. Shaptai Rashkov. Shaptai Rashkov. Siddur Harav Shaptai Rashkov. Yeah. So he's a compiler of the Arizal Siddur. So Kosov, he writes, Kishi Yavoyu Labesa, when you come home, Achar Tfilas Arvis, after davening Mairiv, Yismach, you should be happy, because you're about to start your say there, for Yoimar, and you should say, and he gives an instruction of what to say, and then it says, Mitochin HaKa'adam HaMatzis Kanal Siddurai. You should set your plate with your matzis, as mentioned before, the order of what to do. Okay, so he says clearly, it's after you come home from Shul, before you um, make Kiddush. Which is you open the door in the beginning, you see the sorry, where you go to before you start, you open the door, you should come because Malachim don't know, well, for them, the way the way they see. okay, very nice. Okay, so continues that the Rebbe. Okay, so this is now, now we have the sources, right? So we have now three sources we have the Medina de Gemara. From the law of the Gemara, the Mishnah, and the Shulchan Aruch, Kiddush, dip, then set your plate. Or wash dip, because you have to wash for your dipping, and then set your plate. We have uh, the Emdin, and what seems to be implied from the Shalah, before you even go to Shul. Right? Now, from that fact, it would become clear that when the Gemara says to set your plate at this time, it could be understood to mean that it should be set by this time. By the time you get to reading the Haggadah, which is what we're about to do after every dip, you should have it set. Right? Because otherwise, how would Rabbi Yaakov say to do it earlier? Now, why would he say to do it earlier? Presumably, to save time. Right? He says, you set your plate before you go to Shul, and you come back, you can start right away. Right? And you will have covered the Gemara's law, which is, in other words, what's the main point of the Gemara's law? The main point of the Gemara's law is that when you read the Haggadah, you have to have all your things present there because you have to have the mar- matzah as you make. You have to, uh, matzah marim, you, have to, uh, you have to say um, you have to say the Haggadah at the time when you have the items representing the Haggadah at your plate. Okay, so the main point is that it be done be- by the time you set to that. By the time you get to the Haggadah, right? So Rabbi Yaakov Emdin would cover that because he's doing it earlier. He comes home, saves time. But the Arizal, Rabbi Shabbat Ashkov, which is in the middle, we don't get neither because. You're not doing it at the time the Gemara said, which is after Karpas. But you're not saving time either by doing it before you go to Shul, because you're doing it after you come home from Shul. It's the middle. It's the middle. 
So continues the Rebbe. Let's see. V'chein anonoigen. This is indeed our custom. Following Rishab Seir Ashkov and the 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 Arizal's Sidurim, the Sadar Akar to set the plate. Belayla at night. Kaidim Kiddush before Kiddush. So after you come home, but before Kiddush. Ukudemuchas. This is clear. No, this is our custom. Says the Rebbe, and meaning even before you open the altar of Zagada, we know this is our custom because the Rebbe watched his father-in-law, and that was his custom. So that's the custom in Chabad. His father-in-law being the previous Rebbe. And this is also clear from the Alter Rebbe Siddur. He writes, he doesn't say, he doesn't say explicitly, set your table, set your plate now before you make Kiddush. But he puts the order of where you set your, how you set your plate, in between the text of the Karben Pesach, which comes before Mencha, and Kiddush, which is next. So in other words, even though he doesn't say now is when you should set your plate, but he puts the order of how the plate is set before Kiddush, after Karben Pesach. If he put it before Karben Pesach, you might say he's following a Yaakov Emden to do before you go to Shul. But he puts it after Karben Pesach, implying you got to do it after you come home from Shul. Because Karben Pesach is right before Mincha. Right? Yeah. Says the Rebbe. Karben Pesach has to be before Mincha. It is, because the Karben Pesach... Pesach is the last one. Exactly. The That's right. Correct. That's true. That's right. Right. Continues the Rebbe. Yeah. It's correct. You're right. Yeah, it's obvious. Absolutely. You're right. Continues the Rebbe. The same thing is also written in the Prima Godim, which is a halachic decisor, a commentary on the Shulchan Aruch. Um, the Prima Godim is uh, also before the Alter Rebbe. Ashkenazi halachic writer. Okay, so these are the customs. So we have to now reconcile why, if we're doing it at home anyway after Mairev, why aren't we doing it after Kiddush, as per the Gemara's instruction? And the Shulchan And the Shulchan Aruch following that. So it continues the Rebbe. Masha of a Mishnah. That which the Mishnah says, Pesachim Kufidal Aleph, our Mishnah, where there it says, Mazgala Kais Aleph, the two Mishnahs together, and both in the same page, right? There was one Mishnah at the top of the page, one Mishnah at the bottom of the page. The first, the first Mishnah said to make Kiddush, and then the Machlech is Basil Shammai, what the order of Kiddush should be, and then the next Mishnah was uh, to dip. And then it says to bring the rest of the stuff. Mm -hmm. Right? Where's the Gemara? Yeah, dip, and then they bring the rest of the stuff. Yeah. So, that which the mission says, Mazgaloi Kais Aleph. They bring they bring him the first cup of wine. He makes Kiddush. And then it says, they bring before him something to dip. And then it says, they bring before him the rest of the plate. Yesh Leimar. You might suggest this, the Rebbe. Kepedesh, Rebbe Nechananel, to follow the explanation of Rebbe Nechananel. Rebbe Nechananel is one of the early Rishonim, uh, predate Rambam, predate even Rif. He's like, on the, he's one of those people that are on the border of the Goinim, the Babylonian post-Talmudic scholars, we spoke about them in our classes, and the Rishonim of Spain, especially. If I'm not mistaken, Ibn Hanan lived in North Africa. He learned in Babylonia, moved to North Africa, and if I remember correctly, the Rimagash, who is like the predecessor of Ramban, learned from Ibn Hanan. So you can go Goinim, Ibn Hanan, Rimagash, Ramban. Or Rif Ram, maybe Ibn Hanan or Rif. I remember right now. But he's in that train between Rambam and Ga'onim. So it's very, very early on. He interprets the Gemara, Huva Shom and the Toysvis there quotes Rabbi Nechanano, Dahainu, that the meaning of the Mishnah, which says they would bring before him this this, this plate, is Heviu Esa Shulchan. They bring the table before him. Let's look at the Gemara here. Let's look at, let's look at it. I'm oh, sorry, I'll look it up on my... my uh, I have, I have it here. Sorry. I have it on my screen so that people watching can see. So let's go back. Go for your Dalit. Oops, I went the wrong way. Go to Kufi Dal, the Madalif. 114A. Left. Heviu Lafonov. Small size is there. You see it? You see it? 
Si the it, left column? Left column, Hevi Lefanov. Huh? Far left column. Yeah, not all the way, all the way far, far but the Hevi Lefanov, Tysfus, yeah? The big Tysfus there says Hevi Lefanov, the big words, small Tysfus. Mm -hmm. Right over here. Yeah. Okay. Hevi Lefanov, they would bring before him, says the Mishnah. Says Tysfus, Pedish Rajbam, Rajbam learned, and that's how we've been learning the Gemara, because we've been following the Gemara with Rajbam. <laughs> We form the vegetables. Right? This Tysus is commenting on not that they would bring before him, uh, not when they would bring before him the rest of the vegetables, but when they would bring before him the first vegetable to dip. The carpas. The so we learned they would bring before him the vegetables, as our mom taught us. But says Tysus, a nidah. Doesn't seem correct to me. Because it doesn't say clearly, they bring before him the Chazeres. It should say Chazeres, so people wouldn't get mixed up. Exactly. That's right. That you think you would not have to do Chazeres. Uh, That's right. It says here, they bring before him, and then he dips using his Chazeres. But it doesn't say they bring the Chazeres before him, as it says in a minute. That they would bring before him the matzah, the chalais, the chazaris, and so on. Well, they're talking about the cooked vegetables from the plate. Let's see. Because we see in a moment, it's going to say, hey, view the fall of matzah. They bring before him the matzah, and so on. So, therefore, what do they bring before him if they're not bringing before him the vegetables? The nidah, it seems correct, says Taisvis, kipurish ben chananel, the fall of ben chananel. Hey, view the fall of shulchan. They bring before him the table. The table. They wouldn't bring the table in gen at all till after Kiddush. And on this table is, is sitting the vegetables. And Toysvis. The table will be brought before the guy. Not just the vegetables. The vegetables were on the table. But they'd bring before him the table. Seems to contradict the Gemara's analysis. Why? Because the Gemara says you have to have your table set with gold and this and that. And the chairs must be situated. That was the Shukhanar said that. The Shukhanar said that. The Gemara only said to set your play, set your chair for leaning. But we extrapolated from that because setting your plate for leaning means that you should be freedom. You should also set your table to be look to look like freedom. About the gold and that was the Shukhanar said that. Oh what? Yes, which we'll see in a minute. That will that will follow. Let's continue that out the It'll all it'll all come together. This is Taisvis. Taisvis. So Rashbam says, what would they bring before him? They bring before him the vegetables. Rabbi Hanan and Taisvis say, no, 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 they didn't bring the vegetables. About a table. And the vegetables on the table for your dip. Says the Rebbe. Yeah, back to the Rebbe's comment. Let's see. And everything's going to fall into place. Zehu dafka bimechach mehashas. This is specifically talking about in the times of Talmudic era. Shohayu lahem shohanas ketanim. They had small little tables, the fnei kol echav echav, in front of every single person. Sure, the divan. Ah, oh, the divans. The lawyer may be They didn't bring the table after you done kiddush. And this is not the case in our time. In our time, we have, oh, so when the when the Gemara said to set your place that you're leaning, that it should look like freedom, it's only the divan. They don't have a small table in front of you, and therefore you're not setting your kaira now either because you don't have a table. When do they bring the table? Only after Kiddush, when you're eating your first course, your karpas. So they bring before you a table with karpas, and now that you have your table, set your table. But since our table is earlier, is here already, so first of all, like you're saying, put all the silver and gold out to make it look like freedom, just like the old days they would have set their divan for freedom. Number one, and what two is ever telling us now, this is why we're not setting a table between Kiddush and karpas. We're putting it before Kiddush. Okay. Yeah, because now we have a set table. That's right. Then the Rebbe says, I am Toysus, let's go have a look. The Rebbe's telling us to look at a Toysus on page 100b, which is far back from before when we learned. Let's look it up. Who? The Rambam would have come to that same conclusion. You mean the Shekhanar? Yeah, why wouldn't the Shekhanar do that? But so that, I, I think perhaps that's why the Rebbe's telling us that Toysus is quoting for Bede Hanano. Because Toysus, the Toysus, this is just a suggestion. I, I don't know, I can say for sure, but maybe... Toysvis are, are are in Germany or in France, like Rashi, the school of Rashi in the, the 1000s 
you know, later, 1100s. Depends, you know, Toysus actually lasted the longer, lasted, lasted for a century, about 1200s. So we didn't even know who was Toysus. I mean, I'm sure there's scholars who do know, but I don't know. Anyway, it's written in that time and in, in Germany, right? And they're speculating on what would have been in this Talmudic era. But Rabbi Hanano would have had intimate knowledge. He's, first of all, he's earlier in time. And secondly, to the best of my knowledge, he actually learned in Babylonia by the Go'onim. Okay, it's still post-Talmudic era, but still closer to that region. So he would have known that that's what they're doing in those days. But nowadays, they're not doing that. Okay, they were told us to look at a Toysvis on 100B, on page 100B, Dibra uh, Masra She'ein. I haven't looked it up yet, so I'm looking it up together with you. It's like 100B, it said. Yeah, 100B. So I'm looking at 100A. Let's go to the next page. Oh, I don't think you have it in that booklet. I don't think you do. Because that booklet starts from Arve Psochem, and this is the chapter before. No, it is there. You have it. You should have it. 100B. Go back. You have 100B. Yeah. Okay. Uh, 100B. And it's Dibra Masra She'ein. So it's on the right hand side. Yeah, you have it there. It's going to be on the right hand. I have it on my screen. It's going to be on the right hand side where it says She'ein. Go down the big bold letter She'ein. Right there. Uh, which one is it? There's two She'ein. No, there's only one She'ein. You see it there? She'ein and Mishtei Kiddush Hakois Echad. Hmm? Here, I'm like here. She ain't, she ain't. What's it? Where are you? Put base with... Oh, you're right. You're at the right place. I'm at the wrong one. Ha uh -huh. It's Kuf base and base, right? That's what I said. Kuf. No, sorry, not one hundred and not one hundred and two B, one hundred side B. Yeah. Sorry. Oh, so I'm at the wrong place. Yes, I am. My apologies. I'm at the. <laughs> I'm at the wrong place because I do see a different muscle like the same one. Okay, one hundred B. Let's do it again. My apologies. Sorry, I'm going a little over time, but we're getting carried away, and this is exciting. So we're gonna read. Yeah, that's right. Let's see. Oh, this is so cool. Okay. Uh, so the the, um, the Gemara said, The table isn't brought unless Kiddush has been made. We learned this with respect to the person covering the, the, the bread if he was in the middle of his meal and making Kiddush. And that way he like makes Kiddush and uncovers the bread and voila, it's a new Shabbos meal. Right? We spoke about that. Uh, yeah. yeah. So because the table shouldn't be brought until after you make Kiddush. Okay, so it says Taisvis. The Gemara and Shabbos tells us that if, if a person comes home with angels on Friday night and the table is set, so Malach Toiv Omer, etc. The Gemara there says basically that if you come home and your table is set beautifully for Shabbos, the good angel says, So shall it be next week, and the bad angels are forced to say, Amen. If God forbid you come home and the table is not set, the bad angel says, So shall it be next week, and the good angel says, Amen. Okay, so it seems to imply that you actually have your table set before you make Kiddush. Whereas here the Gemara says, table isn't brought unless you make Kiddush. Right? It says to us, like Kasha, no question. The It's got to be set before Kiddush, but in a different room. In the kitchen where the waiters are, where they carry your table. Right? But they don't bring that set table to the place of eating, to the dining room. Wasn't that an issue what we had? It isn't the place of your meal, but the meal is being brought to you. Oh. Right? You're sitting in the same, on your divan. Same room. You're making kiddush. Your waiters come and take your little kiddush plate away, and then they bring your plate, your small little table, like they were told us, with your kiddush, with your with your meal set. Yeah, your meal. So when the angel comes home and blesses you because your table is set, it is set, but it's set in the kitchen with the way where the waiters are. Right? Because you're very wealthy. You're living in Talmudic Roman houses. Right? <laughs> okay. Therefore, Texas, now Texas continues. But actually, nowadays, Shulchan Shalanu, our tables, Shem Gedolim Yehse, that are very big, we die, way too big. The Kasha Lavim Acher Kiddush. It's impossible to carry these tables in from after Kiddush. The European influence. European influence. So you can't like bring the wait such so long. 
between Kiddush and your meal. If we if we had our dining room table set in the kitchen and then I have to step them into our dining room to eat, it would be it'd take way too long between Kiddush and and your and your this is just a practical variation. And exactly. Of, if we're under the gilin, our, that's right. So under the gilin, our custom is lift race mapa to put a cloth over the chala, lakadesh to make kiddush. And then that way your table set. A time before the iltois, the the reason is stated clearly in the shiltois, which is actually a gaonic work. Kiheched detesi so the biyoke the shabbata. Um, that way your 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 table your plate your your bread is uncovered and like it's in the honor of the shabbos because you just finished making kiddush. Actually, you were saying just a few minutes ago about how if they were in mid meal before kiddush, they would cover it. That's right. It's just uh, says says Tosfos. We do the same thing even when we're not mid meal. Because in the olden days, they didn't need to do the covering part because the table was in the other room. They made Kiddush, and voila, the table is being brought in. But that would take two seconds because it's small little tables. But our times, big tables, right. cover, make Kiddush, and then voila, here's our Shabbos meal because we uncovered our challah. And then he adds the other reasons because of the uh, mana. The mana was covered, fine. So then he was telling us to look at this, this uh, Toysus in context of the fact that we are setting our kaira before make Kiddush. That's right, and therefore it's not I guess maybe completely a break from the Shulchan uh, or or the, the Gemara's. Well, it is a break from the Shul Gemara's instruction, but the Gemara's instruction is in those times, and that would have happened. Now the question is, Rambam is just keeping with continuity of the way. Just, okay, we haven't read Rambam, but uh, the Shulchan Aruch will still be keeping with continuity. Sure. Yeah, and I I wonder. I actually, you know, if someone's watching knows maybe it's the Sephardi Ashkenaz. Written. Maybe because it's not, it's not, no, the Ramah doesn't say anything different than the Shokhanar, at least so far as I know. I don't know, but maybe other people have, someone's watching, they have other customs where they set their table. I know people who set their table before they go to Shoal, following Rabbi Yaakov Emden's instruction, which again, from Nevis' perspective, would actually be perfectly fine because you're setting it, because nowadays you're setting your plate before. And in fact, just like you have your angels blessing you that you have your table set, okay, so have your, have your, have your kaira set. Okay, so. To, for the angel's blessing, we can say we're doing what the Shulchan Aruch said to have the gold and the silver to make it opulent and beautiful. So the angel's going to bless that anyway, even if your plate is not set. But one could follow that same logic and follow Rabbi Yaakov Emden and say, okay, set your kaira also. But nonetheless, I'm curious to see if there are anyone today who sets their kaira after karpas. If someone watching knows, please let us know. I'm curious to see if there's other customs today. So to the best of my knowledge, I think most today would set their kaira before they go to Shoal. Or when they come home from Shul before they make Kiddush. I'm wondering if there's anyone who... Uh, is, your, is that your custom in your family? When do you set the Ka'ara? We open the door. You know. No, no. When do you set your Ka'ara? After we come home from the Shul. Before Kiddush. Yeah. Yeah, that's our custom as well, following Arizal's custom. So I'm wondering if there's those who have a custom to actually wait till after Kiddush, as the Shulchan Aruch says to do, including the Altar Shulchan Aruch. Right? Interesting enough. Okay, we'll continue tomorrow more that the uh, the Rebbe Sagada about which uh, cooked right because the Gemara told us uh, to put down two cooked items, which was the beginning of setting your kaida, which we're doing again before we make kiddush. So we're going to look at the uh, the Rebbe Sagada about which vesh, which cooked item should be there, right? Our custom is the egg, and then we'll talk about that. And then once we do that, we'll get to the Alter Rebbe Shulchan Aruch, which tells us about karpas and how to set your plate. Which again, the Alter Rebbe says to do that after Karpas, and then we'll get to back to the Rebbe Sagot about Karpas itself. And if never go back to the Gemara, have a wonderful day. Isn't there? Yep. Sect of Jews that have the most um, continuity of, 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 of the, the language of uh, that would be the Yemenites. The Yemenites and the Persian so Jews. The, the, it would be interesting to see how the Yemenites... Not only that, because the Yemenites they actually... So much true to the literal text. Yeah. Not only that, but the Yemenites uh, the Yemenites and the Persians, the, the, um, the Iranian Jews, probably also go very far back. But, but you're, it's interesting you bring that up, because the Yemenite Jews would have also, similar to the Romans, maybe not divans, oh. but they would have sat on the floor of cushions. So that, which means they're, they're, they're like... Their whole thing could have brought, been brought to them from the outside, similar, similar to the small that tables. The that, times. That's correct. Mm -hmm. So that could, that, that's a good point. It'd be very interesting that to see that. Yeah, we have to look up some other haggadahs and see. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Have a good day, Eden.